Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Welcome to another edition of the program As You Answer the Call. I am Fatima Umaru Hadija. Glad to be with you once again on the program. Pilgrims' enlightenment is taken seriously by the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, and the State Pilgrims' Welfare Boards. It is carried out in different forms to ensure that pilgrims are well educated and informed on the spiritual and other aspects of the Hajj. Tonight on the program, we are focusing on the imperative of pilgrims' enlightenment as a prelude to the commencement program of the 2020 Hajj. Also in the program, we will have our regular segments such as News Diary, Making the Hajj and Stakeholders. We shall also test your knowledge on the Hajj and Umrah issues in our quiz segment. Stay with us. <laughs> Thanks for being there. We begin the program with the news diary as presented from our studio. The acting chairman of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakon, Barista Abdullah Mukhtar Muhammad, has advised staff of the commission to be more proactive in carrying out their duties. He stated this during an interactive session with senior and junior staff of the commission who took part in various training programs with the support of different agencies and institutions. Some of the training programs include induction course on economic and financial crimes at the EFCC Academy, training on security matters at National Intelligence Agency, NIA, training on civil service procedures and effective service delivery at Ahmed Bello University, workshop on information management, as well as training on achieving zero tolerance for corruption at the Anti-Corruption Academy of Nigeria, ACAN, in Kefi, Nasara State. The Nakon boss said, observing the principle of due process and respect for public service are key to the success of the commission. The kind of productivity, the kind of inputs, the kind of ideas, the kind of commitment, the kind of zeal, the kind of values you are going to add to the organization, that's what matters most. Barista Abdullah Mukhtar then called on staff to support the new board coming on stream in order to further consolidate the successes recorded at NACON. Political head cannot succeed without the support of the staff and the technocrats. You are the engine room and in the last four years what we are able to achieve is to detach political head from major activities of the organization and allow the staff to be the driving force. Don't allow them to fail. Whatever it takes, support them so that they succeed. Earlier in their different presentations, the senior staff highlighted the key functions being carried out by the various divisions of the commission. Organizing such interactions is consistent with NACON policies of keeping staff updated on matters of operations. The newly constructed Hajj Camp Jumaat Mosque in Yola, Adama State, was opened to the public with Jumaat prayers. The construction of the mosque was undertaken by the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakan, as part of its rehabilitation program for Hajj camps across the country. The projects are being carried out with funds from the Hajj Development Levy. Lamido of Adama, Dr. Mohammed Barkindo Mustafa, who was represented by the Galadim of Adama al Haj Amin Mustafa, inaugurated the mosque. Now conducting chairman Barista Abdullah Mukhtar Muhammad was represented at the inauguration by the chairman Adama State Pilgrims Welfare Board, Usman Ali Umarafa. 
The mosque was built for the use of pilgrims while in transit. Kaduna State Governor Nasir Ahmed El Rufai appoints Sanit Al Hatu as the new overseer of the State Muslim Pilgrims Welfare Board. A statement by the Governor's Special Advisor on Media and Communication, Muyuwa Adeke, says the appointment is with immediate effect. Sanit Al Hatu, who served as the board's head of operations, is taking over from Imam Hussein Uzoho Ikara after the expiration of his tenure. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, if you are just tuning in, the program is As You Answer the Call, a public enlightenment presentation on the activities of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON. The objective of mounting the weekly enlightenment program by states and the FCT is to acquaint prospective pilgrims with the do's and don'ts of the Hajj and Umrah. How are the states and the FCT discharging this responsibility? This is the focus of our next segment, Spotlight. Educating prospective pilgrims before they embark on the journey to Saudi Arabia for the Hajj is key to the successful conduct of Hajj operations. This is why the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NAKAN, State's Pilgrims Welfare Boards and the FCT are leaving nothing to chance in ensuring that prospective pilgrims are well enlightened about the Hajj and other related matters. With the ongoing 2020 Hajj registrations across the country, pilgrims officials in the States and the FCT are making preparations to kickstart the weekly pilgrims enlightenment programs in their respective states. Over the years, in the course of the enlightenment campaigns, Hajj officials have identified key areas which every prospective pilgrim going for Hajj should be aware of. These include understanding the compulsory and non-compulsory aspects of the Hajj rights, handling of travel documents and basic travel allowances, do's and don'ts of aviation and other related matters and handling of luggages. Others are respect for Nigeria and Saudi government laws, being security conscious, issues of drugs, human trafficking, abscondment and overstaying visa permits, among others. The enlightenment programs are carried out in collaboration with relevant government agencies by adopting various means to reach out to pilgrims. We have constituted what we call stakeholders forum and we do organize what we call enlightenment and socialization tour to identify local government areas with a secretary established and a design secretary who is from national orientation agency to lead the team in sensitizing the pilgrims on the do and don't of the kingdom of saudi arabia and that of nigeria like in the local government areas where you find muslims who hardly come to the town we set out to interact with them at such a level so that they will know what a Hajj entails. It is not just enough that you are a Muslim that you know that you have to perform Hajj at least once in a lifetime. But there are don'ts and the do's. We set out to make sure that each intending pilgrim right from the onset of indication of intention knows what he is supposed to do using the teachers, the preachers, the ulama. We have one tour whereby we invite custom officers, uh, we invite road safety people, we invite port health people, and we invite uh, NDLE, people, representative from NDLE, and we invite many other Hajj components. So when we invite them, we have to go through uh, each zone. We are zoning our pilgrims in one zone. We go there, we give them, uh, we delivered uh, this Pimshu, and after that, lectures were delivered by different organ organizations, representatives. That is, for example, NDLE man will come and talk to them on the way, on rules and regulations of the kind of items that are prohibited here in Nigeria to carry to Saudi Arabia. Central to effective pilgrims' education and consistent with Nakan policy is the training provided 
to carefully selected officials who in turn are expected to train or teach the pilgrims. In addition to the weekly pilgrims enlightenment campaigns being mounted by the various state pilgrims welfare boards across the country, Islamic scholars are also sent to Saudi Arabia during the Hajj proper in order to guide pilgrims on how to observe the various Hajj rites. One other area requiring proper attention during training programs is the question of how to provide support to the elderly, especially now that new reforms have come into effect. What major problem which always we used to face uh, regarding enlightenment is that somebody will bring his elderly father or mother of over 80 or 90 years and he will register him or her uh, then at the day of departure he will just bring her to the airport dump her and went away so it now becomes burden to the entire management of the boat because they had to take care of that person they will bring him here looking after him and uh, at the end of the day some may even collapse but we managed to take them back again so i don't know uh, we cannot say that if you have reached so so years you cannot come to hajj uh, uh, since it is no more there in the teachings of the islam but had it been that there is a age limit that you have exceeded 60 or 70 or 80 you will not come alone there must be someone who is guiding you, who is taking care of you. Uh, if there is a such a rule, it will certainly assist the management uh, uh, of the pilgrims. Similarly, for the 2020 Hajj Enlightenment, attention will also be focused on how pilgrims should make better use of the facilities in their various apartments. The facilities include how to use the electric door keys, using the lifts, intercom, and the internet as well as how pilgrims should conduct themselves during meals and to consolidate on these and other forms of enlightenment Narkin has made it a policy for members of its ad hoc committees to also serve as civic educators the civic orientation section is settled with the responsibility of sensitizing the pilgrims on all aspects of Hajj except Manasik therefore all of us here are members of the Civic Orientation Division, I mean section. Why? Because even if you are a member in the Committee of Housing, Accommodation, Feeding, Aviation and other related issues, definitely by the virtue of your position, your act, you are trying, you must try to lead the pilgrims on how to do one thing or the other in order to you know, behave as a good pilgrim. Furthermore, taking advantage of modern technology such as developing Hajj guide applications and new media platforms can help in furthering pilgrims' awareness during the 2020 Hajj operations. The impact of pilgrims' enlightenment cannot be overemphasized. Previous exercises recorded huge successes as a result of awareness creation among pilgrims. One thing is uh, almost all the issues that uh, are related to uh, hard operation are uh, things that need just to be improved. The issue of uh, luggages, it has been what is wondering, uh, worrying the National Hajj Commission because most of the uh, general pilgrims are not willing to comply with the rules of 32 kg and 8 kg. But that is a history. Go to the first state and see. Alhamdulillah, our pilgrims are obedient and uh, they have complied strictly to, to, to the, 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 the directives given by the National Health Commission of the 32 kg and the 8 kg. By not involving in anything that will negate the you know, supremacy of Nigeria or the uh, prosperity or well-being of Nigeria, that is one, by shunning or uh, conveying or pairing drugs, we have talked to them intensively on that. Secondly, we, uh, we, we have cautioned them against abscondment while at the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. That has been, uh, you know, embedded in them. Uh, and all the pilgrims have, you know, 
religiously carried that to the letter. With the weekly program for Pilgrims Enlightenment about to start across the country, Nakan and State Pilgrims Welfare Boards should come up with more plans that will encourage greater participation amongst pilgrims. You are still watching us to answer the call. Coming up next is Making the Hajj. Our guest tonight is Sheikh Hasib Noor. He takes us through discussions about the importance of undertaking the Hajj journey and other issues associated with it. Let's hear the discussions. For Muslims, performing the Hajj at least once in their lifetime is very important and comes with its own rewards from Allah. Tonight on Making the Hajj, Sheikh Nasib Noor explains the significance of undertaking the Hajj journey. Hajj is, as you all know, one of the pillars of Islam. And the reason why it's a pillar of Islam is because how much a person can learn about themselves as well as how much it can bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Creator Almighty. As you all know, this is an entire pillar of Islam for one reason. Every one of these pillars brings you to Allah, connects you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, connects you to the Almighty, brings you nearness to the Almighty. Hajj at least once in your life. So subhanAllah, they came to Hajj and they've never prayed before. But this one pillar is the means for them to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to come near to Him. And, and this is an amazing journey which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. The Hajj provides Muslims the opportunity to deepen their faith. Similarly, persons who perform the Hajj earn Allah's forgiveness from their sins. Whoever comes to Hajj, and if their Hajj is an accepted Hajj, Hajj Mabrur, لَيْسَ لَهُ جَزَاءَ إِلَّا الْجَنَّةِ It has no other reward except paradise. And the scholars mention that the reason for this is a person comes with all of their heart, all of their body, all of their mind to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're sacrificing everything to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of that, because of that sincerity, that pureness, that pure yearning to come to Allah, you are going to go back home as the Prophet ﷺ says, whoever comes to Hajj and does not uh, have argument or commit indecency or have a bad intention and have uh, any kind of argumentation, they will go back at, to their homes the day as if their mother gave them birth. Performing the Hajj has also been a source of unity for the Muslim Ummah. The first house to be built on earth is Bayt al-Haram. Uh, the uh, Masjid al-Haram, the, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the Kaaba. And he said 40 days later was Masjid al-Aqsa. And this teaches you the importance of the Masajid like Masjid al-Aqsa and Masjid al-Haram. He said that this particular place was made for the unification and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For all of humanity to be united in the worship of Allah. Sheikh Nasib Noor said the physical activities experienced by pilgrims while observing Hajj rites remind one of the sacrifice made by Prophet Ibrahim salam, and his family. He therefore urged Muslims to emulate them for the development of Islam and humanity. Now to our next segment, the quiz. Welcome to the quiz segment. Our last question on the program was Name the three persons whose histories are associated with the three Jamrat. The correct answer is Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, his wife Hajara, and their son Prophet Ismail alayhi salam. The winner is Asma Adamu from Sokoto State. She provided the answer ahead of others. Asma Adamu will be contacted on how Nakon will reach her with the prize she won. A quiz winner will get 25,000 Naira cash prize. This is part of Nakon's effort in social investment in Nigeria. For this week, the question is, give the names of the two white pieces of cloth used by male pilgrims while in Ihram. I repeat, give the names of the two white pieces of cloth used by male pilgrims while in Ihram. Text your answer to the number shown on your screen. The winner will be the first person whose correct answer is received. All answers should carry name and location of sender. Good luck and happy viewing. Welcome back. Stakeholders is next. Tonight, we are looking at the working relationship between the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, and the Association of Hajj and Umrah Operators in Nigeria, AHUN. The idea is to understand how the forging of this partnership is enhancing Hajj management in Nigeria. Stay tuned. Muhammad 
Other than states, the FCT and armed forces, private companies such as store operators, also organize Hajj and Umrah for prospective pilgrims. And so, Nakun in line with its mandate ensures that these operators, just like the other entities, provide registered pilgrims with the required services. A worker Siddiqui is a tour operator. He speaks on how Nakon regulation enhances their relationship with pilgrims. Nakon is the overseeing authority, is the regulator. Uh, it has to ensure that uh, there are laws that must be obeyed and respected by the tour operators so that the, the person that we will all serve, who is the, the pilgrim, uh, is protected and has value for his money and that he is not shortchanged in any way. The services that the tour operators provide pilgrims include, among others, inbound and outbound airlifting of pilgrims on schedule, provisions of accommodation and feeding, transportation in Mecca and Medina, arrangements for the stay of pilgrims in Mashair, as well as securing their basic travel allowance. The tour operators provide these services based on the different packages they offer to the public. If a package is sold to you, do not buy a dummy. Ask questions. Um, what class of ticket am I traveling in? When am I traveling? What is the name of the airline? What is my destination? Am I landing at Jeddah Airport or at Medina Airport? What hotel am I going to, to stay in? Uh, what star is that hotel? Um, how many are we in the room? Now, through its various means of pilgrims' enlightenment, ensures that those registering with tour operators are aware of the various packages that are available and to also get value for their money. For better service delivery to pilgrims, Nakon provides the enabling environment for the tour operators to carry out their businesses effectively. While the Commission licenses their operations, it also trains them on matters such as e-track system for pilgrims registration. It also organizes workshops to update the tour operators on Nakon reforms and Saudi policies. When you capture your pilgrims, please let us always cross-check. In addition to this, Nakon meets from time to time with the tour operators through its umbrella body, known as Association of Hajj and Umrah Operators in Nigeria, AHON. Discussions at such meetings will usually focus on matters relating to checking the activities of illegal tour operators, pilgrims overstaying their visa permits, absconding, as well as drugs and human trafficking. With your support, we are able to bring in some reforms and recorded some <coughs> modest achievements in the private sector hajj arrangement. Certainly we are not there yet. There is still room for improvement. A lot of things need to be reviewed and new regulations need to be put in place. In efforts to encourage professionalism in the activities of the tour operators, Nakon gives award annually to any company that excels in giving pilgrims value for their money. That's it on this week's edition of the program as you answer the call. Join us same time next week for another package. Good night and thank you for watching.